Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with a new game. I'm playing Armello. This is a really cool game. It's actually like a digital board game of sorts, so this video will be a little bit different from my normal videos. Um, a lot of the videos that I've seen for this game, I, to be honest, haven't really liked because um, it's not like a computer game in the sense that you can just start playing and figure things out as you go. This is really a board game and you do need to explain a lot of rules up front. So there will be a lot of me talking in this video, I want to apologize for that up front. But uh, with this video, unlike with any other video that I've been able to find for this game, you will actually come away knowing how the game works and knowing how to play it, which uh, is what I'm going to try to write here. So the backstory for this game is that the Lion King of the Land has become corrupted by rot, and your objective is to basically take over as King of the Land. There are several ways to do that, which we will discuss later. There are four different clans. There's a wolf clan, a bear clan, a rabbit clan, and a rat clan, and there's two characters for each one. I'm going to go ahead and pick a pretty straightforward character here, River the Wolf. Each character has several statistics, which I'll now explain what they are. Fight tells you how many dice you roll in battle. Body simply tells you how many hit points you start with. Wits does a couple of things. Um, it's helpful for breaching the castle later on um, because there are several challenges in this game that rely on your wits. Basically, if you face a certain challenge that is a wits challenge, then your wits attribute tells you how many dice you will roll. And one of the main things you need wits for is for getting into the castle so that you can take out the king. Um, What's also, if I don't know if I just said this or not, but it's your maximum hand size. So at the beginning of each day, you draw up to your wits number of cards. In uh, this game, there are day and night cycles, and so cards are drawn at dawn. Spirit is an interesting statistic. It is sometimes used for challenges, in which case your spirit score tells you how many dice you roll in that challenge. And um, at dusk, meaning after the day phase ends and the night begins, your amount of magic is set equal to your spirit. Magic is a resource that you use to cast spells, and rather than gaining a static amount of magic each day or each night, um, at the beginning of the night, you just uh, have your magic set to whatever your spirit is. So if you have like eight magic and you didn't use it, once night hits, boom, your magic drops to three. So, you know, spend it while you've got it. Every character also has a special ability here, so River is very straightforward, she's a fighter. Um, basically, when she attacks someone, she deals the damage to them first with her bow, which is kind of cool. So you want to be on the offensive with her as opposed to on the defensive. So let's go ahead and pick her. Um, you also get to pick a couple of uh, special perks and things. As you play this game, you unlock stuff. Here, as you can see, I haven't unlocked too much, but we do have uh, this ring here that we can pick, which gives our... Wolf Huntress Stealth on mountains, both at day and at night. So let's talk about that mechanic. Um, stealth means that your opponents can't see you. Now generally everybody's open, so chances are people will see you walk into the mountain, and if they remember that you're there, then of course they can plan accordingly. And see here we're playing against the AI, so presumably their memory will be perfect. But um, this can be useful because if uh, you are stealth, opponents can't see you, so if they forgot where you are, they don't they don't know. Also, um, being in stealth gives you an advantage in combat, whether you initiate the combat or whether you start the combat. So that can be helpful for that reason as well. So we're gonna grab it because it's the only choice. Select, and now we have to pick a perk. So there are four perks that you start out with. Basically, plus one bonus to a statistic. There's one for fight, wits, body, and spirit. And then you can also unlock perks. These four perks are unlocked by um, winning with a certain one of the victory conditions. There's four different victory conditions in the game. So the one that most people get because it's the easiest one is the prestige victory, which we'll talk about in a moment. If you pick this one, you start the game with two prestige. Now, um, what prestige does is two different things. Number one, if the king dies, either because um, the rot has consumed him, then whoever, or, or because somebody slays him in battle but then dies themselves, like uh, the king and the other player just murder each other, then whoever has the most prestige wins. So that's one reason to have high prestige. The other thing about prestige is that whoever has the highest amount of prestige at the beginning of a day round gets to choose one global effect that happens. There's always a choice of two different effects, and whoever has the highest prestige gets to pick which one takes place. So that's another reason to have high prestige. However, I'm gonna go with a stat boost because I don't necessarily wanna go for a prestige victory. And since there are only two different things that can happen, I don't really mind if the AI ends up making that choice early on. 
So here for this character, I'm actually going to go ahead and start with fight. We're going to play a very straightforward game here. We're going to be oriented around winning in combat, and ultimately we're going to try to take down the king. All right, we are ready to start. This game is very visually appealing. Um, the graphics are a big draw of the game. One disadvantage of the game at the moment is that there isn't a whole lot to do other than play this. Like, it is a pretty deep and mesmerizing game, but at the same time there's no, like, linear campaign or anything like that. So, for $20 it is a little bit of an expensive game. Now, once the game starts, you get to pick a quest. So let's talk about how quests work. Uh, every quest basically puts a marker in a random location on the map, and if you get there you complete the quest. Now the rewards for every quest are always following a similar structure. You always get one prestige, that's what the symbol is, for um, completing the quest. And you also permanently improve one of your statistics. So the cup here is wits, the sword is fight, and then the flame is spirit. Now I'm going to pretty much ignore spirit for this game, I'm just not going to worry about it. So we're going to go for one of the quests that gives either uh, fight or wits. Again, fight being how many dice you roll in battle, and wits being what your hand size is and as well as determining how many dice you roll during wits challenges. Now, in addition to this reward, you will also have a shot at getting another bonus. So the spirit stone here, um, it presents another one of the alternate victory conditions. Basically, if you manage to get to the king and you have four spirit stones, you automatically banish him and win the game without having to fight him. Um, however, spirit stones do literally nothing else. So if you collect the spirit stones and don't win with the spirit stone victory, then you essentially wasted all your time getting them. I can also get a poppet here. He is a follower. And um, what this guy does is he makes it so that while he's equipped, you know, your opponent loses two health if you survive the battle. So if you like fight your opponent to a standstill but don't kill him, then the poppet will inflict to damage them. Unfortunately, the poppet has this worm symbol, and that is rot. So let's talk about that. If you have at least one rot, then at the beginning of each uh, day, I believe, I don't can't remember if it's day or night, basically once per round, you lose a hit point. And like right now, I've only got four hit points. So, you know, losing a hit point every day is kind of a big deal. Um, rot also presents another way of winning the game. If you attack the king, and you have more rot than the king does, then you actually um, win a, a different type of victory. It's basically similar to just straight up going in and slaughtering the king, because at the end of the day you have to break into the castle, and you still have to kill the king. But uh, well, the way that rot works is, if you fight against someone who also has rot, then whoever has more rot than the other, gets a number of bonus dice equal to the other person's rot. It's a bit of a complicated mechanic, so just to use a simple example, suppose I fight against someone who has three rot and I have five. Since I have more rot than they do, I would roll three bonus dice because three is how much rot they have. So basically, if you have more rot than the king does when you fight him, then you actually get a slew of bonus dice and then that makes him easier to kill. However, the king's rot actually grows over time, so it's really difficult to have more rot than him. And because you have to break into the castle to face the king, and breaking into the castle is like really, really hard, it's actually very difficult to pull off a rot victory. So I don't want to go for it. It's a cool effect here with this poppet, but I don't really want to take that risk. So we're going to go ahead and just pick this to try to get the spirit stone. Now these challenges, you'll say like a wits challenge reward or fight challenge reward, these are optional, you don't have to take them. But basically, you get a 10% chance of beating the challenge for each of the stat points that you have in the appropriate stat. Meaning, if you if I take this wits challenge and I have four wits, I'm gonna have a 40% chance of winning it. And there's always some kind of a penalty for failure. Some of the penalties don't matter, some of them are really bad. So you don't always take these challenges necessarily. Notice that with this poppet, I would actually have a higher chance of winning because it's fight and I would have a 50% chance. But again, I don't actually want to equip the poppet, so I'm going to ignore this. And I'd rather boost up my wits to have a higher um, hand size than to boost up my fighting skills, which are already pretty good. Now, the other thing about wits is, wits is one of the skills that you can use to break into the castle, so having high wits is important for getting to the king. So if you want to play like a, the, the most straightforward victory condition, which is just to basically saunter in and kill the king, you will also need to have high wits to actually be able to break into the castle. 
Um, additionally, Wits increases your hand size, and the more cards that you have, the more that that can, you know, obviously give you good items or beneficial effects or uh, help you out in battle, as we shall see as well. So we'll take this one. I'm not that concerned about the Spirit Stone, honestly. If I happen to find four Spirit Stones, I'll do it. I'll go for that victory condition, but it's not something I'm going to focus on. Okay, so that's a quick run through. What the? Uh, hello? Yeah. Are we here? There we go. So that's a quick run through of some of the basic game mechanics. Now let's talk about your turn. On your turn you have three action points and you can use the action points to basically move one space per point. There are different types of terrains, so the hills just do nothing. There are stand or stone circles. What happens here is uh, if you walk into them, you gain one health. There are settlements, which give you plus one gold every morning. Uh, if you control them, so those are good to get. Although, it's pretty easy to take them over. Somebody could just wander into the settlement after you've been there and take it back over from you. Um, and then there are mountains. Now, the mountains are pretty cool. So, mountains cost two action points to get into, but... Uh, so that's a bad thing. But I am a character who has stealth in mountains, so people can't see me. And also, if uh, I attack someone from a mountain, or if someone attacks me while I'm in a mountain, then I get an advantage because I'm stealthed. The symbol here means that there's a quest here, so the quests kind of go to random places. We've got one pretty close by. So what I'm going to do is keep it simple here. We're just going to go over here and take over the settlement to get some gold income. And uh, I can't go into this mountain because it costs two action points to get in there, but I'll go in there at nighttime and complete this quest. Now let's take a look at the cards here. So this gives a minus two rot until the tar end of target's next turn. So you can actually uh, use it to cure yourself of rot. This is a peril. Notice it says peril rating. What this allows you to do is to put a peril down in a spot, and if somebody walks into that spot, they actually have to win a challenge in order to avoid the negative effects. So this, um, if someone fails to defeat this challenge, they will lose two health, and they'll also uh, gain a rot if they die, which is bad, because rot's kind of hard to get rid of. I happen to have gotten a card that can get rid of it, but it's pretty difficult to get rid of generally. Um, this has a cost, though, of gaining one rot, so I'm not going to cast this card. Bark Skin gives you two body, so it increases your uh, maximum health by two until the end of your next turn. And it can be useful because there are some body challenges, so that means that if you face one of those challenges, you'll throw two extra dice in that challenge. And there's a Throwing Axe here, which you spend two gold, and it just basically uh, has a range of one. You can deal two damage to someone before you attack them. So right now there's nobody in my way, so I'm not going to use this thing. Alright, so since I have nowhere to move, swamps, by the way, are not good. You walk into a swamp, you lose a health, so there's no reason for me to walk in there. We'll just go ahead and end the turn here. So this has a little bit of a civilization-y element to it, in that uh, you get to see what your opponents are up to um, while they're taking their turns. These are all AI, I'm not playing against real people. Notice uh, Mercury cast Disguise on himself. You can hover over here to see what it does. So this grants stealth on every tile. Uh, until the end of Mercurio's next turn. So we're not going to see that rat at all, and we're going to have no idea where he's going. Forests are normal tiles, except that at night they grant stealth. So, um, I saw that bear walk into the forest, but I don't see him now. Alright, this place generated a spirit stone, so if I can get in there, I will. This is a bane. So, banes have uh, an attack of five, so they roll five dice in fighting. Um, and they also have four hit points. So they're not too hard to kill, but they're not a slouch either, and they're probably going to damage you. They also have five rot, as you can see. So if you have rot while you face them, they'll actually get bonus dice equal to your rot. Unless, of course, you end up with more than five. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just walk into this mountain and complete my quest. So I can lose two health if I fail to get the spirit stone. And I still get the plus one prestige and the plus one wits. So let's see here. Um, this is one of the annoying things about this game is you can't look at what your cards are um, until you uh, finish this quest. Like, I can't back out of this quest to see what my cards do. But I know that Bark Skin increases my um, body by two. I don't actually know if it increases your current health as well, but I think it does. So let's go ahead and try this. The Spirit Stone might be nice to have later on. Only 40% chance of success. And hey, we got it. Sweet. So we collect a spirit stone in addition to plus one wits and plus one prestige. All right, now I spent two action points to move into the mountains so I can make one more movement. There's a spirit stone here, so I can go there. I can also go into this standing stone, or I can keep calling them standing stones. I don't know why, they're stone circles. But I don't need to gain health at the moment. So I will actually uh, head into this forest here. 
which is stealthy because it's nighttime, and pass the turn so that um, I can try to get over to the Spirit Stone on the next turn, hopefully, when the next day starts. Now I need to select a new quest. So I don't really care about Spirit. We're going to ignore that here. I don't care how good this helm is. It actually is not a bad item. Um, this one is a body challenge, so I can actually cast Bark Skin before I complete this quest and have a 60% chance of success. In battle, plus one fight and shield cards change to sword symbols. Uh, so you throw an extra die in battle, and any shield cards count as sword cards instead. I don't know if that's actually that good, but we can try to get a spirit stone here. 50% chance of getting a spirit stone. You know what? I'm gonna go for the spirit stone thing. See if that works out for me. Alright, so there's my next quest, which is fine. There's a spirit stone along the way. I should be able to get there in two to three turns. And uh, Mr. Bear here has the highest prestige, so he's going to pick an effect. A global effect that affects everybody. Two magic from all heroes don't have it. Minus one prestige, no problem. I have two magic. I wasn't going to cast anything anyway. So that's not a big deal. Um, being the prestige leader, you know, is nice for being able to choose these effects, but at the end of the day, since there's only two effects to choose from, it's usually not too big of a deal. That's why I don't like taking the, um, the perk of starting with an extra prestige. I'd much rather have an extra stat point. Right, these guys are the king's defenders. They go around, at first, they're nice, and they go around trying to kill these banes. If you kill one of them, you lose a prestige, and you might end up having to kill one of them, just because uh, eventually they start to go a little bit crazy and attack you. Alright, so at the start of your turn, you draw cards up to your wits count. Since I didn't spend any of my cards last turn, I still have my whole hand. But since I beat a quest that increased my wits by one, I now have an extra card to draw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for an item. So items cost gold, and some of them can go into your inventory permanently and give you beneficial effects. Since I'm going for a um, combat victory, I do want to try to get an item that isn't just a temporary thing like this axe or this moss, but actually like, you know, helps me win. Alright, there we go, that's a good example. So in, plus, in battle, plus one sword. Uh, we haven't actually had a battle yet, so I will explain that as soon as we get in there, but suffice to say, plus one sword is a good thing to have. Alright, we get to go here. The standing stone, which is just what I'm going to call it because I don't know why, um, is kind of in an awkward spot. I'm hemmed in by this player who I don't really want to fight, um, and this guard who I definitely don't want to fight, but if it comes down to it, I should have a pretty good shot against this bear, Sana. If you look at her stats, she only has three health and only two dice. Her sword is a two, so she only throws two dice in battle. So unless she plays some effect to help herself out, it's not a big deal. So I will go ahead and go into this forest and grab this standing stone, spirit stone thing, and uh, end my turn here, because I don't think there's anything I can do. Actually, I could actually go attack her. Hang on a second, I could just kill her. Yes, if you kill another player, you gain prestige. Now when you die, you just respawn back at your headquarters, but let's go for it here. So I'm going to chuck a throwing axe at her, and I'm going to attack her. Now my special thing, remember, is if I attack someone, I deal a damage to them right off the bat, so that kills her. So she's dead, so I gained a prestige, and that was a pretty good turn. I'm going to end it. The guards, I don't think, get pissed at you for killing people or anything like that, so the guards are like, all right, you, you go ahead and kill each other, dudes. So the bear could go and attack me if she wanted, but I doubt she wants to. She stepped onto a dungeon, so dungeons give you a random thing, like she got plus three magic from it. Uh, dungeons can also do bad things like spawn a bane that instantly attacks you or teleport you to some random place. So I don't necessarily want to walk into dungeons, but you don't necessarily want to go out of your way to walk into dungeons. So there is one character in the game that uh, has an increased chance of getting rewards from dungeons, so that character might want to see dungeons out. So I'm going to focus on questing, that's kind of the most straightforward way to play this game, is just to try to focus on uh, beating your quests. Um, because each time you beat a quest you gain a stat point, and possibly another reward as well. So it's just a very straightforward way to play, and I figured for this introductory video that'd be the way to do it. Alright, so I gained some magic. The reason I gained magic is that at the start of each night, your magic becomes equal to your spirit. So I don't have too much magic, but three is enough to cast, you know, some junky spells. Um, I can't see Barkskin, but I'm pretty sure that would take up all my magic to cast. So I'm going to keep fishing for items. I only have two gold, but it's something. Moon juice plus two magic. Not exactly what I need at the moment plus one action point and minus one health. So that gives you um, an extra action point just for that one turn, but you lose a health to play it. So let's think about this. Um, I can actually make it over here as long as this dungeon doesn't teleport me away or spawn a bane. So what I'm gonna do 
is either go for it through this dungeon, or I can actually cast this hot rot wine and um, walk over to this quest going one, two, three, four. The problem is I'd have to lose another health to um, walk over this bog. But, at the same time, I can increase my body by two. Does that increase my health? Nah, yeah, well, guess we're about to find out. Aha, it does increase my temporary health as well. So in that case, walking over the swamp and using a hot rot wine isn't a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drink this wine for an extra action point. And we're gonna walk through the forest, avoiding the dungeon. Just to make sure I can make it to my quest here. Alright, I can lose a health or gain a spirit stone. I guess it's worth trying this. So we'll go for the challenge here. 50-50 odds. And oh, so close. Alright, so I didn't get it. But I do increase my fight, so I now throw an extra die in battle. And um, at this point, I can gain some magic, which doesn't really matter. I can cure rot, which doesn't matter. And then I can lay this down, but that would cause me to gain a rot, so I don't really want to do that. So we'll just end the turn here. Okay, so I have a new quest now. I'm not gonna, I'm, if I were a good player, I'd watch what my opponents are doing, but I'm like, screw it. So I can get another Spirit Stone here, but that's a Spirit Challenge, so I only have a 30% chance of getting it. I don't want the Spirit stat. I can increase my health by one here, which uh, I would have a 40% chance of getting these boots. Ignore Mountain and Swamp Penalty, that's pretty cool. But let's see this, out of a higher chance of getting this, plus two dice and perils, that's really good because it helps you get into the castle as well as avoiding other perils. And I have a 50-50 shot of getting it. And it increases my wits, which is my hand size, which is helpful for getting into the castle, so I think that's what I'm gonna go for. All right, so a bunch of stuff happened that I didn't really pay attention to. Oh, this rat's getting beat. And she actually beat down this giant bear thing. All right, cool. So it's daytime, we collect our gold, and I'm not the prestige leader, unfortunately the rat has me beat by one. All heroes gain stealth until the next dawn or until they're spotted, oh jeez, okay. So it's going to be difficult to attack um, my opponents, and everybody will have stealth, so if anybody does end up fighting each other, um, then like both sides have the ambush bonus in combat. Okay, so I'm still trying to get some items here to, to uh, beef up my combat potential. There it is. When defending, gain two swords. I'd rather have something a little bit more offensive than that. Um, but let's see. I'm going to get magic at night, so I don't really need to cast to get any spells right now. Let's just grab another item. Plus one prestige for each claim settlement under control. So that's a pretty expensive item, and it's uh, taking up a spot that could help me in combat, so I'm not really going to equip it. But I will equip the spear in case anyone attacks me. I get plus two swords at the start of a battle if anyone attacks me, and of course we don't know what swords do yet, because we haven't had a battle, but uh, that's it. So let's see, where's the quest? It's back here. So I'm going to just make my way back over there. This time, I'm not going to go through the swamp. I will go through the dungeon and just hope I don't get teleported away. Alright, good, I get picked up some gold. That's very nice. We walk through the forest, and I'm gonna go back to this standing stone. Oh jeez, no, the rat's there! I totally forgot about the rat. Well, hopefully I can beat the rat. Okay, so here's combat! We're both ambushed, um, and we're gonna roll these dice. So ambushed means you can't burn cards. When, uh, normally you can burn cards to, to set one of your dice something specific. I'll just have to explain that later. Right now all I can do is roll them. So the way it works is swords count as a hit, shields count as a block. At During the day, star, suns count as a hit, and at night, moons count as a hit. Um, here, uh, that wasn't really worth it because I totally just died. So I didn't kill the rat, and the rat did kill me. So I took the rat down to half health, but I didn't kill her, so she gains a prestige, or he gains a prestige, and I lose one. I totally forgot this rat was here because I didn't really want to attack him at all. But it actually works out kind of nicely because by dying, I did lose a prestige, but you keep all your stuff and you get teleported over here, which is nice because my quest is right there. So I kind of I kind of, ended up, kind of ended up working out for me, sort of. Um, so yeah, in combat, I'll talk about that while the AI goes, you can burn a card to automatically set one of your dice to the appropriate symbol. So you can, for example, burn... I'm planning to burn the scepter just to get one of my dice to be guaranteed to roll into a sword in battle for a hit. Um, like I said, the uh, moons count as uh, a hit at night, 
Suns count as a hit during the day. These worm cards, the rot symbols, they don't do anything, they just suck. And this is like the wild symbol. This is the best one. It counts as a hit and it explodes, meaning it rolls again and it can give you basically any other die rolls effects. Okay, so it's looking a little bit rough. The rat is leading in prestige by a fair margin, but wow, a spirit stone just appeared here. So I can complete my quest and gain a spirit stone. That's pretty solid. I might end up actually getting enough spirit stones to... I've already got two. You need four to be able to banish the king. Now, you do have to still fight your way into the castle, but um, it, you uh, don't have to fight the king if you have the four spirit stones. So if I end up happening to be able to get four of them, then that could be a way I can avoid having to fight the king. All right, I'm going to still keep going for the same thing. I really just want to get more offensive items. In battle, plus one die, that's nice. So it's random, it's not guaranteed to be anything good. But it is just an extra die roll, which can be helpful. And it's good to spend your cards in general, because if you spend your cards, you draw more, and you can get, you know, more good effects. All right, let's go in here. Oh, for God's sakes! Ah, uh, someone's in there. So the, the, that ambush thing, that ambush event, really sucks, because... If it, if it wasn't an ambush situation, then I would actually be able to play cards. And on top of that, I uh, would have would be dealing an extra damage at the start of combat with my special ability. Alright, now this is nice. I'm gonna deal more... I think I dealt more damage to the opponent than she did to me. Am I correct? Yeah, I dealt two and she dealt one. Whoever deals more damage wins the battle. So because I dealt more damage to the bear than the bear did to me, the bear moves away and I take over the tile, whereas if the bear had dealt more damage to me, then um, I would have been pushed back. So here, this is actually totally fine. I don't, I don't mind a 50-50 chance of losing a prestige since it's not the victory I'm going for. So I am just going to take this 50-50 chance of picking up this recruit. And I got him. Awesome. So... It does cost two dice to equip this thing, but or sorry, two gold, but I don't have any party members, so I might as well put him in. And having extra dice in perils is extremely strong because it helps you break into the castle. Now, right now, I'm not really ready to fight the king in a battle because the king loses one health per round, so if you're going for a fight in, fighting victory, you kind of want to fight him as late as possible so he has less health. You notice he's also got seven dice that he throws, and you do need to survive the combat, so I need more, like... I need, I basically need better items than what I have here. I've got uh, a defensive item, which isn't good for attacking the king. Plus one sword's a little bit weak. Plus one die is okay, but not that great. So I really would like to try to get either some party members that can help me fight the king, or um, four spirit stones, which I think I need two more. But wasn't there a... Oh my god, the bear took the spirit stone that appeared here. Damn. Uh, so I need to get two spirit stones, which is, which is difficult to do. Um, yeah, so I can get the spirit stones to try to banish the king, or I need to get, you know, some more health to be able to survive the king's counterattack. Okay, what do we got here? Plus two magic. I don't have any spells to cast. I don't want to gain rot. I really don't want to ever use that thing ever. So, uh, there's really nothing for me to do here, and I can't pick my next quest until my turn ends, so I don't know where my next quest is going to be. I think the bear retreated into this freaking forest or something. So we'll, um, see, is this, is this mine? No, this is, this is the bear's. So do I want to stop by the settlement to pick it up? No, I'd rather just go over here and steal the rat's settlement. Okay. Remember, settlements give you plus one gold at dawn, so it's nice to, you know, get them, even if they don't stick around very much. Oh, I'm being attacked? God damn it. All right. Is this another both ambush situations? Yeah, so I can't burn cards for free swords, but I do have... Uh, better stuff than... I have more dice because of my higher fight score. Six versus three. And I have a bunch of swords. So I might actually be able to kill this bear here as long as I don't take four hits. Hoping to get some shields, actually. Um, I didn't get too many shields, so I will take two hits. Unfortunately, I take that damage and the overkill doesn't do me much good. But I do kill the bear, which gains me a prestige. So that's nice. Okay, I really want to pick up this quest here. So I can get a spirit stone with a fight challenge, 60% chance. That might actually be my best bet. Um, wildfire staff, don't care. I don't want to get spirit. And then bonus health is actually really good. Unfortunately, this warlock's useless because I don't want to get rot. So do I want to take the health, which is more significant for me, or do I want to take this, which might help me beat the king? Well, I'm going to try for the spirit stone. 
I'll then need one more Spirit Stone to be able to banish the King automatically, if I can break into the castle, which I have a decent chance of being able to do that, because I do have six wits, and um, I have two extra dice whenever I'm facing a peril, so I'm going to be throwing eight dice um, while I'm trying to break into the castle. So let's talk about how to break into the castle. There's four ways in. Two of them are a wits challenge, two of them are a spirit challenge, and basically you have to get like four symbols to match up. Like, of the dice that you roll, you need to get one each of the symbols shown. So, it's kind of difficult to do, but you can burn cards to match up some of the symbols. That's why having high wits is good. Each hero is stripped of one randomly equipped item. Oh, damn it. Well, I guess I was hoping to upgrade my items anyway, so... Um, let's see what I lose. I lost my spear, the defensive one. That's really too bad. It's probably my best one. Although, it doesn't help me kill the king, so... It's alright. Uh, I haven't really talked about trickery cards yet, because this character isn't really a particularly tricky one, but those cards let you, like, lay down traps and stuff for your opponents, so they require a lot more, you know, careful planning of, like, watching where everyone's going and trying to guess what they're likely to do. Okay. So, I'm gonna keep going for items, I just really want to get some good items, especially now that I've lost one. Two bonus dice in battles and perils on scouted targets. Um... Unfortunately, to make use of this, I would have to actually uh, scout things, and I don't really have any good scouting ability, so that's just something I'm going to throw away. Uh, since I have six wits now, I guess I'll just keep fishing for items. Battle plus one sword? Alright, that'll do for now. Oh, I don't have enough gold, actually, because I lost all my settlements. So, okay, well, once we get up to two gold, I'll try to equip that thing. We'll go here. I do lose a health walking into the swamp, but then I'll gain it back walking into this stone circle. Watch your health, though, because you, you can just die from walking into a swamp, which is pretty embarrassing. My main problem is my body stat that I started with is a little bit low, so maybe I should have taken the quest that increased my body. Sana is, like, the weakest fighter, but I might actually be able to kill her. I am wanted. So, uh, if you kill someone who's got a bounty on them, you get a bonus reward. For killing him. So I'm a little bit vulnerable here. I did not get any healing items or any really good combat items. So it's a little bit awkward at the moment. I got all this kind of useless crap. I guess I could have played something that uh, gave me a rod and then cured it. But this is actually only temporary. It's only until the end of target's next turn, so it'll only be a temporary cure. Alright, so uh, I'm glad that Mercurio died, because Mercurio was the prestige leader. So I've got, um, what is it, four prestige? Sana's just doing sucky, Mercurio has four as well, and the bear got up to four just now. So we're all kind of tied as far as prestige goes. I'm hoping not to go all the way to the end. The king loses one health per round, so after nine rounds, you know, the king just dies. Um, but I'm hoping not to take it that far. I would rather just uh, win before then. All right, so I got a couple of different options here. There's a spirit stone back here that I could pick up. I can walk through the swamp, lose a health, gain it back from walking into the standing so stone, stone circle, and I'd be up to three. I'm not sure I'd have enough time, though, to then uh, finish things up. So what I'm going to do is just plow ahead. I'm going to go here. Go here, hopefully not get teleported or have a bane spawn on me. Eek. Oh, I got teleported. That's really bad. So I teleport over here. I'm in the middle of friggin' nowhere. Um, and I guess we'll just go hide in the forest. Now it's gonna take me a little longer. But I do at least get to walk through this sleeping place. Um, perhaps, if things don't change, and get one of my health back. Kind of in a weird spot, because I keep getting items, but none of the items are god or good. And, um, you can't just willingly discard items, so far as I know. You have to burn them in battle. But I don't want to get into battle because my health is low. So it's just all kind of awkward all around. And the king has five health left. So I don't have too much time to um, get back into get, to finish my quest and get over to this castle. All right, so he's doing a challenge. He failed. He wasn't able to clear that symbol. So he actually died for that, which is good because that means he loses a prestige. Now, how does it work if we're tied on prestige? He's the prestige leader. I actually don't know how ties are broken, but he gets to pick the thing. The 
king has opened a portal to the underworld, three banes appear this night. All right, so we're gonna have a lot of banes out there. Now, banes aren't the worst thing. Um, because if you kill one, you get a prestige. I don't really want to do any fighting with just two health. Maybe with three health, I would do some fighting, though. Also, as a character, um, my, my special ability is I deal a damage to the thing I'm about to fight. So, banes essentially have less health um, if I'm the one attacking them. Alright, so the King's Guard actually defeated a Bane, and now it's my turn. Alright, well, here... I, I finally got some gold. So we'll go ahead and equip that sword so we'll be able to draw an extra card. Let's go here and heal up. Now I have a tough choice to make. I can either try to get to my quest, which is pretty far away. I can go here and then here. And then it'd still be another turn to get there, but there's actually a peril in the way that I don't really want to deal with. And there's, or I can go through the mountains. And Sana is in my way as well. Um, or I can just go and pick up this settlement, which gives my increased gold. Well, this is a tricky situation, but I am actually um, gonna go over to this dungeon. Hope I get a nice reward of some kind. You can actually get spirit stones in these dungeons too. And we'll see what Sana wants to do. I mean, Sana's not really a combatant. Okay, well, I guess she's gonna fight. But finally, we're fighting an actual fight, and I can finally burn some of these cards. All right, so because it is daytime, moons do nothing, and rots just never do anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn this thing, which gives me a wild thing, which is a hit and an extra die roll. I'm gonna burn this scepter to set one of my dice to a sword. And depending on how confident I am, I can actually burn this just to get rid of it. Thing is, it's um, five dice to five, so I didn't want to take any chances. Um, I want to maximize how many dice I roll because I do want to, you know, try to get some shields. Okay, so she hit me for one damage and I killed her, which is nice because it gives me a prestige. You know, I should have realized she was going to try to attack me because I do have a bounty on my head. But I'm up to five prestige now, so as long as Mercure doesn't gain prestige here... I'll do okay, and I'm gonna actually get to draw three cards next turn. I got Crook's cast on me, so I lost a gold, not the end of the world. So at night if I fight, I can burn this Moon Juice in the Spyglass, because Moons are hits at night, so if I do end up fighting anybody, I'll do that for sure. Alright, Brune finds some gold in the dungeons, and it's night time. Alright, so I've got only two health. And I'm not particularly defensive with my loadout. So I don't particularly want to get into a fight because all someone has to do is get two hits on me and I will lose. I don't have any shield cards that I can use to guarantee having defenses. But what I can do is I can... Um... Oh, man. Mercurio's in the mountain. I was actually kind of hoping to go into this mountain. Whoops. Because if you're in the mountain, you get an extra shield if someone attacks you. I can move to this mountain, but that requires going through a swamp. Oh, no, it's a field. Ho-ho! I thought that was a swamp. Okay, so I will walk here and here um, to get into the mountain. Be stealthed, because that's my special ability. And I have an extra shield in combat, which will increase my odds of getting here and finally finishing up this quest. I chose poorly, though. I really should have taken the quest to improve my body, because my, my health is a real issue. So I could try to get a spell to get like a healing spell, but there are healing items too. In battle, minus one die and plus two shields. So you throw one, ex one less die overall, but you get two shields. Like bonus. Not It's not dice being set to shields, it's just shields straight up. You know what? That's pretty good. I'm going to grab a spell here. All cards and targets hand change to shield symbols. Oh, interesting. Maybe I'll do that. Grants evade until end of targets next turn. This is kind of interesting. So what this does is it makes it so that when someone attacks you, you use your fight skill instead of your, your sorry, your wit skill instead of your fight skill, and anything that you get that is a sword is a shield instead. So it makes it really, really easy to not get hurt. However, if you're evading, you're always going to end up, end up retreating, so you don't stand your ground. So I'm not that interested in this. However, this gives a wild symbol, so it's actually a pretty good card to have because it means that you get a free attack in combat if you burn it, and an extra die roll. All right, now I don't want to fight Mercurio because the odds of me... Let me take a look at him, actually. What does Mercurio have for um, for cards? Oh, my God. So uh, he gets three shields and then a bunch of perils. So he has three extra shields. Yeah, the odds of me being able to bust past his four health and three shields while only having two health myself is pretty small. 
So did I get a healing thing? Oh, I didn't actually get anything that heals me. I just got uh, battle armor. This, unfortunately, because I haven't been doing a good job picking up settlements, um, fortunately, this costs more gold than I have. So let's walk here. Now, I could actually make it to my quest if I chose to walk through this peril, but I don't know what this peril is. That's what the skull symbol is. So if I fail to succeed at it, I could end up being in trouble. Still, I have a bunch of cards and a bunch of different uh, symbols, so I'm actually going to walk through here. Teleported me away last time, but hopefully it doesn't do it this time. All right, wits versus peril, so I throw six dice plus two because I got a special guy. And let's go ahead and burn this to get the rot symbol guaranteed. Um, spyglass for the moon symbol. I don't have any sword symbols, but I'm just open. One of these seven dice comes up a sword, and I can beat this thing. Yep, there's a sword. So I didn't get any bonus for killing this peril or anything. I just, you know, don't get fucked. And we got some gold, which is actually really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put on this battle armor. And, um, let's see. Minus one die and plus three shields. I think that's actually worth giving up a sword for. And now I can go here and complete the quest. All right, I lose two health if I fail this challenge, which means I will die. But I got a 60% chance. F it, let's go for it. All right, these four red hearts need to go away. Oh, come on, no! All right, well, I'm dead. I still got a bonus fight, and I do lose a prestige, and it's not the end of the world, so I'm here instead of over there. It's, you know, six of one half dozen of the other. Let's go ahead and pick a quest here. So this is the final battle. This is a really cool one. So what it does is if you complete this quest, it actually lets you get into the palace for free without having to beat the challenge, which um, isn't that great, because I'm with my six wits, and fistful of cards. I'm not actually that bad at making it into the palace. I might just end up ignoring this quest, depending on where it's located on the map. Uh, he got lucky. He got some magic instead of being pushed away. So Mercurio busted into the castle here. So he has to kill the guard that was in that square and now beat a very difficult wits challenge. And he actually defeated it. Oh, shit. So now he's standing here, and if he goes in and kills the king successfully, then he wins the game. If he dies fighting against the king, then whoever has the most prestige wins. So the bear is like, oh, no, you didn't. I'm going to try to stop you. And then just takes a hit and walks away. All right. This is rough. I might not be able to win this game, but I'm the prestige leader now. So maybe I'll get something that lets me fuck with this rat. The king has graciously poisoned every hero. Pay four gold to have the antidote. Well, I don't have four gold. Uh, portals appear on stone circles across the kingdom. Well, if I had four gold... Maybe I would um, try to screw with Mercurio. Yeah, because he's only, he's only got three gold as well. Poison means that every time you spend an action point, you take a damage. So that would be great if I had the gold. Unfortunately, I don't. So we're just going to have portals appearing on stone circles. Because who cares? So I actually need to get into this castle. I can't afford to um, do that last quest anymore. I need to uh, get in there. Or maybe I need to, like, fight the rat, so I'm not sure what, which is the better way to go about it. The challenge to get into the castle is a very difficult one, so it's kind of amazing that the rat actually succeeded at it. Right, here's the king's guard fighting one of the banes. And here's the king's guard going into a mountain. Are the king's guards going to try to fight this rat? Yeah. The rat is very defensive with that heavy armor, so the rat repels the king's attack. Oh, this is my quest. I guess I just have to go here. Alright, the rat fights off the thing. Alright, here. I'm gonna try a spell. This is actually pretty good. It lets you burn someone, more dealing more damage the closer to them you are. That's kind of nice. And let's try to get some items here. Ah, right, I can throw an axe at the rat. And I can, if I can get next to that rat, I can totally just kill him. Um, let's take another item. Plus four health. Well, that would have been useful earlier. Unfortunately, it's not so much anymore. So here, I need to just get up to the castle. I don't have anything, unfortunately, that gives me like bonus action points. So we're going to go here, go here, and I hate to fight a peril in this forest, but let's see, minus one action point and minus two cards? Eh, it's not the end of the world. All right, do I have any cards I don't really care about? Yeah, we don't care about that one. Uh, sun symbol, I do want to keep that card. Throwing axe is a good one too. Alright, 
Um, I don't care about losing an action point because I've already spent my whole turn. I don't care about losing cards because I was going to have to burn the cards I wanted anyway to beat this thing. Uh, I managed to succeed at this peril by the skin of my teeth. So I'm in the forest. I can make it to the castle in the next turn. So as long as the rat doesn't kill the king um, on his current turn, I might have a chance of getting in there and winning the game. All right, so he lost four magic for failing the peril. He just totally sucked at that peril and lost two gold. And then he walked into a swamp. Sana having a rough time here. All right, here's Mercurio. Probably gonna try to fight the king who's only got three health, but he does have to survive the attack. However, he's got three shields because of his armor that he's wearing, so he's just gonna go for it. All right, here it is. I'm hoping for the, that the rat dies because if the rat dies, I think as the prestige winner, I actually end up winning. The rat also does need to deal three damage to the king. He's actually gonna have to roll pretty well on these dice in order to deal the damage. All right, he took one health damage and did not kill the king. He didn't even hurt the king at all. All right, this, this could work out to my favor because Brune actually immolated the rat and killed him. Go Brun! Man, this guy's got a lot of health, Jesus. And a lot of fighting power, oh crap. So because the rat cleared out this peril, now this guy's gonna try to kill the, the king and the king's gonna have one less health tomorrow. Oh boy, this is bad. I need to get into that castle. And unfortunately, there's a guard in the space that I have to get into. It's rough. It's not looking good. This is this, this is actually one of the spirit challenge places, which is not good for me. I don't know if I'm going to have to beat that challenge or not. Or if I'll just get in by ending my turn there and completing the quest. We'll just have to see. Oh boy. Alright, well I've already got a spell I need to cast. So let's just keep drawing this. Ugh, stupid thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to walk through here. We're going in there. So I have to fight that guard, unfortunately. But the guards don't actually hit very hard, so I should be okay at killing this thing. Alright, so I got a bunch of armor. This guy's throwing four dice. Um, throwing axe I want to keep. But Wild Sap, I might want to keep. Uh, the Ranger's Cloak, I don't give a shit about, so let's just use that as defense. It's nighttime, isn't it? So let's get a hit from that. And I don't need evade, so let's get a hit and an extra die roll. And then, the dice. So I do need to kill the, I need to at least push the guard out of there. I got two exploding dice, which is great. So I don't take any damage, and I will go ahead and kill the guard. I lose a prestige for this, but it's not the end of the world. Sorry, guard. Oh, it's a slaughter. I don't even know if that matters or not. So, kill the guard, lose the prestige, and now we face a quest here. I've never had this situation with the quest in the ta in the actual castle. Unlock the door and enter the palace. Oh, well, that's great. So I'm in the castle. I got this because I just did so many quests. The final quest you get is one lets you get into the castle. Castle. And now I'm not going to end my turn because uh, we need to. burn the bear and chuck a throwing axe at him which actually just kills him so now I'm here which is great and all except I'm not actually sure I can handle fighting the king so we'll just have to pass I'm guessing Sana's gonna attack me oh she's just gonna charge in there is she gonna make it ah no so for each symbol you fail to match you lose a health and you are rejected from the castle or ejected from the castle. She's ejected into a swamp, so she takes an extra damage for her trouble. Okay, this is gonna be close. Because I only have four health, the odds that the king will kill me are actually pretty high. I don't have any like good defensive items. And I don't have any allies that help me in combat either, so I'm really not equipped to kill the king. But I all of a sudden have a lot of prestige. I got seven, zero, two, four. So I have a lot of prestige, so if I can just wait until the king dies, I, that might be my best chance of winning rather than trying to fight him myself. Well, let's see if any of these things can actually help me defeat the king. Uh, 
Okay. The prestige leader surrenders all their gold. If five or more, plus one prestige, less than five, minus one prestige. Okay, that's stupid. Banes from now on have plus one action point and plus one fight. Hmm. I don't think I really want to lose all my gold, so we'll just awaken the terror and hope that I draw some good cards, because I do now have uh, some gold here, so I could put on a pretty good item. Basically what I need is a defensive item, like that uh, heavy armor that the rat was wearing would be great, because that would allow me to survive. I only need to deal two damage to the king, and I would deal one to him when I go in and attack him. Oh, well, all that might be a moot point, because I haven't drawn my cards yet, and uh, this guard's attacking me. So what's going on here? Well, the guard's got five dice. I've got two shields. I could burn this to get a hit and an extra die, but honestly, I'm gonna take my chances because that, that card could be good. Healing me is nice. I don't I don't really care about the attack or the, the defensive of the guard. The guard failed to get any hits on me, so I should stay where I am. So I repelled the guard, which is good. And then the guard's fighting a bane, which I don't really care about. I really wish I had more than four health. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna cost me. Thankfully, because of my high wits, I get to draw a lot of cards. Oh no, is this card gonna attack me too? Well, it should be the same as the other one though. Just like five dice or so, and I have some bonus shields thanks to this battle armor. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about my chances as long as I get some shields. That's fine. Got one shield. Luckily, the guy threw a bunch of moons, which are misses during the day. Had this been night, that would have actually been a very lucky roll, and I would have taken some damage. I'm glad I didn't kill the guard. I don't really want to kill the guard, because if the guard's there, people have to fight him to get into them, or to get into the castle. Alright, another guard comes at me. I'm thinking it's going to be the same thing, though. So, I have some pretty good defenses. I'm throwing a lot of dice. As long as I don't take any damage, I'm fine. I did get a shield as well, which is nice. Oh, man. Okay, the guard only rolled two swords. I killed the guard, which I'm not that happy about, because when you kill a guard, you just uh, lose a prestige. And now the guard's not standing there. There's no, like, option to not kill the guards or to take them down gently. You know, once you fight, you're at the mercy of the dice. All right, so I'm going to just go for defensive items, because I'm pretty sure with my seven fighting, um, I can kill that king. I don't have any magic. I got rid of my card that uh, gives me bonus magic, so um, really it's just all about items. Plus one sword is not what I want. Scout, not what I want. Plus two health, there we go. So I can gain some extra health, which is... Actually, wait a minute. That doesn't increase my maximum health, though, does it? I don't think it does. Um, well, we'll try. I got nothing to lose. Actually, I do have something to lose, because if I, if I use these in the fight, they explode, and they give me extra die rolls. So basically, um, I'm just gonna check my inventory here. In battle, plus one die, minus one die, plus two shields, that's good, because I have so many dice, plus one sword, I really don't think I got anything that beats that. Well, plus one die, or I guess plus one sword is better than plus one die, although I can just burn this card, but that's not plus one sword, that's just turning a die into a sword. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and um, I really don't think this is going to increase my health beyond my maximum, unfortunately. So since nothing actually matters, I didn't get any good defensive items, we're just going to try to take the king on. It takes the entire turn. I do hit him once, so I only have to deal one damage and not die. The king's throwing a bunch of dice. I do have some armor, which is good. Definitely want to burn my shield. And it makes sense to burn the wild symbol cards, because those give me an extra die roll and a hit, so I'm like, might as well. Hoping to get some shields rolled. I'm not gonna burn the sun though, because I've already got enough hits. Uh, I just really need shields at this point. Okay, I don't think he's gonna deal six damage. Oh my god, he might. He needs, well, he needs, to, he needs to roll ten dice. Okay, so the king did hit me. A little bit but my starting health was enough thanks to my defensive items and the card I burned and I destroyed the king so I win the conquering victory here yay so um, it's kind of cool you can get this victory screen you get your accolades um, for some reason 
Um, you, I, I don't know what these do. You have to look them up on the wiki, I guess, to see what the heck they are. But I got more accolades than everyone else, so hooray. I want a combat victory, so I unlock the watch, which it does not show you here what the watch does. And because I um, made finished two games with the Wolf Clan, I get this Moonstone ring now, which I can use at the start of the game. I wish it would tell you what this stuff did um, here on the screen. Don't know why it doesn't. But that is whatever this game's called. Armello, in a nutshell, with fairly comprehensive rules for how to play. Now, there were some elements of the game I didn't discuss in as much detail, like the trickery cards, um, and we really, really didn't get a chance to see how the rot works. But um, we'll, I'll do a couple more games for this game, or yeah, I'll do a couple more videos for this game, so you'll see how those mechanics work in some other games. Take care, everybody. And uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed that. See you next time.